But let me talk about what you were talking about before, which was inflation of the 70s. President Ronald Reagan, you'll remember, made famous the misery index, which added together the inflation and unemployment rates. In 1980, after a decade of inflation in the 70s, it topped out at a towering 22 percent. And that number has echoed through the decades. The inflation of the 1970s left a deep and lasting scar. Those who lived through it remember the gas lines and the unemployment lines. Meat prices rose 25% in one year alone. Milk and dairy prices skyrocketed too, by nearly 20%. So, could it happen again? The general view is that a combination of generous government spending in the 60s for the Vietnam War and social programs, combined with the Arab oil boycotts and a monetary policy that was too easy in the 70s, all led to an inflationary outbreak. So what do we have today? Generous government spending? Check. Easy monetary policy from the Fed? Check. The Fed is at zero interest rates and pumping billions every month into the banking system. But because of the shutdowns from the pandemic, manufacturers are reporting supply disruptions. That's making it difficult to meet demand and pushing up costs and some consumer prices. And demand is coming. Every indication is that consumers are about to open up their wallets as the economy reopens. So should we brace for a return of the great inflation? Not so fast. Since peaking in 1980 at 13%, inflation has been relatively under control. The last 10 years, it's averaged just 1.7%. It's been kept down by three factors. First, technology. That's slashed the cost of everything from televisions to cars and computers. Next, globalization. That's created competition from every corner of the world and driven down manufacturing costs. Finally, the absence of an inflationary mindset on the part of consumers. Economists think it takes a belief that prices will rise in the future to create real inflation. When consumers worry that something will cost a lot more next year, they'll buy more of it now. That drives up the price because there's more demand than supply. Higher prices reinforce the belief in higher prices, and you have an inflationary spiral. In response, the Federal Reserve has to hike interest rates, as Paul Volcker did in the 1980s, plunge the economy into recession, and bring supply and demand back into balance. The Fed's interest rate policies over the past several decades has helped keep consumers from developing inflationary expectations. Almost everyone who lived through the 1970s inflation remembers how painful it was. The 20% mortgage rates, the double-digit unemployment rates, the choice between paying rent or buying milk. No one wants to go back to the future if that future looks like the great inflation of the 1970s. Fed Chair Powell said again last week that he sees inflation as temporary and that it seems unlikely that that will change the underlying inflation psychology that has taken deep roots. Now, we're going to get a test tomorrow with the release of the Consumer Price Index of just how much the Fed has been able to convince markets of the temporary nature, nature of the coming surge in prices. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.